Hello everyone and a warm welcome to another interview series in this new year 2021. The year 2020 has been pretty rough in many sense and uh, whole challenges were thrown at us and uh, on one hand we were trying to sort of paced in terms of practice academics and on the hand it also opened up some new possibilities such as of through video conferencing platforms like the way we are doing now something i think last year 2020 we did to use this opportunity and invite interesting people invite eminent people who have in the field of architecture design material construction experiences and share their knowledge we did one series shades of green in many practicing designers who are working with sustainable technology instruction uh, with the successful implementation of that we are coming up with a starting from today's interview the series is uh, titled as technology in architecture explorations and innovations in this series we are going to invite seven uh, eminent personalities from the field of architecture and structure the the interviews are going to go on on every saturday starting from today on in the months of january and february on one hand we have working with the structural material optimization and on the other hand we are also going to talk to people who have been exploring the parametric approach in architecture and design so the format of the series is uh, is going to be pretty much same as we have been exploring so the guests are invited to share a presentation so and then that presentation uh, basis on the base uh, on, on which we try and generate a discussion we also try and a panelist who can question and also the people who are connected with us on social media also have an opportunity of engaging the guest they can also ask a question on our social media platforms we are live at the moment on facebook and instagram both and uh, these interviews are also to be there permanently on our facebook page but they are also later on uploaded on our insta uh, channel and YouTube channel and each interview is also in uh, uh, form of an article the gist of the interview published in the form of an article on our website so uh, if you go to akidairies.com you can see interviews that have been published i am really really delighted to share that uh, we are beginning this series with someone who is a very very dear dear friend mentor uh, professor gurudev singh uh, sir welcome uh, on akidairies thank you thank you so much uh, i'm also i'm also very much delighted to share that today we have professor bhairav patel with us as a guest uh, panelist and uh, uh, we we will he, we are uh, you know we'll pressing that we'll be able to generate a good discussion at the end of professor gurudev singh's presentation before i hand it over to professor gurudev singh please allow me to say a few words about uh, professor gurudev singh professor bhairav patel and briefly uh, about the talk what uh, he's going to present us today professor gurudev singh is a graduate from sept university ahmedabad he is not only an architect, but also a designer, teacher, and a builder, someone who builds with hands. With 45 years of professional and teaching experience in different institutions in India and Australia. He has received a Lifetime Achievement Award in teaching by Australian Institute of Architects in special recognition of contribution to architectural education. He also held the position of the Dean at School of Environmental Design and Architecture, Navrachna University, Vadodara from 2011 to 2018. Currently, he is interested in exploring new and lightweight materials and technologies. Uh, let me also introduce Professor Bhairav Patel. Bhairav Patel has an experience of more than 10 years in the profession of structural engineering and has worked on design of a variety of structures. He has a bachelor's degree in civil engineering from Nirma Institute of Technology and a master's degree in design from SEPT University. After having gained valuable experience in design while working with VMS consultants for a period of four years, he his own practice in 2012. Since then, opportunity to work on a variety of projects involving different materials like timber, 
rammed earth, bamboo, masonry, etc., along with conventional concrete and steel structures. He is also fond of and has been in faculty except university I'm the 2009 a warm welcome to both of you and also to all the people who have joined with us on Facebook let me just take few minutes tell me uh, introduce what professor Gurudev Singh is going to uh, talk about in this talk professor Gurudev Singh will discuss how structure in architecture is a process other than a product he believes that for learning it is important step beyond what you all exploration in this process exploration learning by making learning from nature and learning from your own body becomes very important the talk will take you through this in his teachings and exchanges will have images of student in progress uh, professor Gudev, this is the sound for presentation please have your uh, presentation well, thank you so much. Um, can I? Start by going uh, live. On, just a minute, please. Please allow me to, to share the screen. I ask you will have to allow me to be. Uh, I strongly believe. that one must take a step into the unknown uh, on a path of progress and a path of knowledge without taking a step into the unknown uh, in the dark it is very difficult to to really um, expand your horizon uh, in understanding uh, any subject for that matter not only architecture and design so let me show you a couple of diagrams first to start with uh, i will do a student work continent some from australia some from goa and some from uh, my the earliest school, uh, Seda, that is Navrachna. So I start by showing th this diagram. Just one, just one minute. Let me just. Is it possible to sharing? They'll be getting me. Just a minute, please. Allow me to sharing it. Yeah. Now it is very important that um, we take a, a leap, which is which is beyond uh, our understanding, beyond our horizon. And that leap is the fundamental beginning of, of, um, of learning, basically. What generally happens is this. Here. We, we have knowledge about um, technology, about design, about everything, you know. Uh, and then, of course, um, we have people around us who, who have knowledge, you know. 
So what generally happens is that the knowledge starts acting more like a wall here, more like a wall here, and doesn't allow you to go here. But you just drop right there. Now this is the fundamentally, this is the wrong process. That is why I said a process. Because it is important that you take a free leap first. You don't know whether that leap, you will be able to achieve that or not. That is secondary. That is secondary. But a free leap is, is very important. Without a free leap, you will basically end up putting some building codes and the knowledge of understanding you have about structure and apply that structure onto the building and that is it. You cannot go beyond that. So to go beyond a free leap is essential. It is then or to reach there where you have taken the free leap, we, we use different knowledge. We do our research, we do we take nature and take um, uh, by making and, you know, history and our own body and a whole lot of other things. So my initial part of the talk is going to be on how we, after taking the free leap, what do we do here to, to achieve that? and in how many different ways we can do it. Now, in one talk, it is not possible that I can pick up everything. So I will um, I will pick up few issues in this more in the, and few issues, I think, is a, is a topic by itself and maybe sometime down the line, um, we can come and talk again on another issue, uh, more elaborate, um, uh, more elaborately done. But in this issue, uh, that is what I'm talking about, that when you take a free leap, you basically, and you go, you, you stretch it here, that process here is going from abstract to reality. In an abstract sense, you, you take a leap and, and, and then you try to increase your knowledge to, to, to reach there. Uh, and that process, learning by making is the most important one of the most important things. And down the line, when I'm explaining other things and showing students work, I will uh, keep on demonstrating on how learning by making uh, is very important. You know, um, there were times when great buildings were done, great structures were created, and there were hardly any understanding of calculations and the way we can do now. And people built it dropped, it broke. They again built with a better understanding It again broke and they again built. And it is that process which has generated some of the best architecture and structures in the world here. And so this process of learning by making is one of the fundamental and most important um, methods of learning here. Um, the learning from, from nature I'll go into detail of some of these things here now by going into the next. So learning, uh, learning from your own body, learning by making mistake and solving it, uh, and learning from history. I don't want to get more into detail because this particular topic is uh, is a, maybe a very large talk by itself. Uh, learning from nature and it's endless, completely endless, and you don't go into this process. Uh, when you have a problem in hand, you go into this process every time of the day you have a diary, you move around, you see a grass petal and you see something. Um, you end up uh, end up um, drawing it and sketching it and and uh, and um, learning from it and storing it and then when you need that you go back into the uh, let me let me draw some couple of sketches here like the grass you see coming out here you know you take a section and you realize it's beautiful structure you know but that is the structure if I take a section here and that is why. And this structure slowly starts becoming lesser and smaller and thinner here. You know, 
The same thing is the banana plant here. You take a banana plant here, the plant is going like that here. And that's a cellular structure here. That's a cellular structure. As you go higher, this will slowly start opening out and become and that becomes the cellular structure here. And that is that is the transformation. This is when it's going vertically up and that is the section when it starts flaring out. You know. So it's beautiful to see how, how it is done and how at a micro level you see a bone and you see the, the structure um, within the bone uh, and how you know, if I micro, you see the structure here, which is a very nice cellular structure, and there's a lot of uh, work being done on that. Now, a lot of people put it as biomimicry. Now, biomimicry and learning the principles of structure are not exactly the same thing. Uh, in mimicry, for example, um, just to go back again, uh, what you see here, what you see here, is more like a mimicry. I think that's a that's a tree being made in in Singapore, and they have actually adopted a whole lot of things from the tree. But it is still a kind of a mimicry. But in terms of picking up and understanding the principles, and then when you pick up only the principles and apply, then it becomes very different. Now I know um, I in Australia when I was there, if there's a big tree here and some small tree here. And the wind would flow like that here, above that. And this tree, when you cut it, you it, it will be basically like that here. The grain would be going like that instead of going straight. Because with the wind, the tree was getting twisted. And the entire tree was, was getting twisted, getting making a structure there. You know. And 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 not only that, for example, um, we were in, in Mandvi. And, and they make these boats, you know. they make these boats, beautiful wooden boats here. You know. And they have the structure up there, they make a boat here. Now to get this structure here, they did not have the laminated timber construction, which could be done, which could you could pick up the timber and glue it to make that shape here. So what they were doing uh, was they would pick up the trees, they would uh, they'll take the tree, bowel trees, and take a rope and bend the tree. So the tree is bent like that here, you know. And they will keep it like that for 10 years. You know? So when they cut it, that piece is perfectly well, well done to fit into the boat here. And that is even better than the laminated construction that we are trying to do now. So this kind of an understanding from nature is a very important thing. And as I said, um, you, if you have a problem in hand and you start looking for something in nature, it's difficult to find it because there is so many millions and billions of, of, of uh, issues which are available in nature. So the best thing is to keep a diary. When you move around, make small notes of your thing, categorize them, and that might be a very nice uh, way to, 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 to see the world, basically. Learning from your own body. It's a very important component. I know if I my finger is doing like that here, but if I just put if I just put three bones here, you know, three bones here, I won't be able to do I won't be able to do that here if I put the muscle point here, and that is why my knuckles are coming out bigger. It's because my knuckles are bigger here. And my tension lines are going over the knuckles here. That is the reason I am able to do this here. If you see this this body here, if you see this, can you see the blue line which is going like that here? You know, it is it is this blue line which is going like that. So it is almost like a tree here. It is this whole three dimension, and I can swing my body, and I have ten tile members both ways going like that. And when I sit here. My head doesn't just drop like that. No, because there is a tension line here which goes and tension line which goes across here. And that is able to move my head because there's a tension line which goes and there's a muscle somewhere here which is controlling my head like it's beautiful. The structure of the body is so good that anytime you get, get stuck, you know, best is to, to put your body in that position and, and you will get a reasonable answer. 
you know i take a brick and hang it down stand there and with with that i can feel the tension on my i i take the my take the brick and 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 go 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 like that here then you can see that i i can see the the compressive muscle here and the tensile muscle here and then i i bend this here and i can feel a torsion here you don't need to really understand how these things are you just apply put your body in that particular position and you will see how your body reacts to it and from understanding of which muscle is in tension and which is getting stressed and which is become harder you will be able to understand where is compression where is tension how the torsion is taking place i think this is so get very sensitive about your body put your body in that situation and, and try to try to see how you can um, find a solution for that learning from mistakes now this is a very interesting topic um i will have to draw this um i i have suppose one stick here i give you one stick and i apply a load now i want to stop this might bend i don't know in which direction this is a stick here it might bend in any direction i have no idea in which direction it's going to bend so uh, let me see let me the other way around i put three sticks here i put three sticks here i tie them together you know and apply the force here i have no idea how they are going to bend so if i don't know how it's going to bend how am i going to resolve that here now i give you a joke a pj rather you know um, a person went to a doctor saying look i have bad cold and uh, please give me medicine and he says take a chilled water shower and and put a fan and sit in front of that he said damn it i will get pneumonia he said exactly i have medicine for pneumonia Now this this may be a, a, a poor joke, but this can be applied to the construction here. Now what I do is I take these three sticks, and I make sure that I bend these sticks here. I take these sticks here. I bend one stick this way, one stick this way, and one stick this way. Now this is what I'm doing to catch pneumonia here, basically. Now once I do that, when I apply force, now I know that this stick which has bent once. will only go in that direction it will not come back like that it will keep on going in that direction so i have taken i made a mistake to a limit where i exactly know what the behavior of that particular um, material is and once i do that all i have to do is all i have to do is apply tension lines here now this compressive force which is passing through is now getting transferred to this tensile force which are the ties here and this is the perfect structure so what i did was i made a mistake i allowed the structure to make a mistake and then i i i solved it uh, because i know how it is going to behave here exactly like the joke i told you but this is a very important component and this keeps repeating if you see in history this is very common scenario just to give you a very good example how how the romans the roman understood only the semicircular arch they made semicircular arches here and at the end they would end up putting one um, buttress here and these forces were nullifying each other but this arch they they did not understand that when you rotate the arch it becomes dome and the dome behavior is very different uh, from the arch they would they, let's take a, a example of pentium uh, you know let me draw it roughly you know they basically wanted something like that here a sphere a cubical thing uh, and half of it is dome and half of it is down there but it won't stand here and they must have made many mistakes on that and it keeps on happening Uh, so what they did was they made this wall very thick you know and then took lots of sandbags and placed it here you know took a lot of sandbags and placed it here basically trying to nullify the forces the horizontal forces which at that time they did not understand what is happening they they simply knew that something here somewhere here it was breaking uh, and it would it will collapse 
So the 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 whole so the form of the of the pantheon became something like this here. Now you end up getting a wall that big here. So what do you do with that? You basically make a nave here. You make a niche here. So your plan basically has a thick wall, and you end up having these negative spaces in there. And it is it is this mistake because they did not understand how an arch works. Gave rise to a beautiful structure. You know, gave rise to a beautiful structure here. Sorry. So this is the this is what the pantheon is all about here. So it is the mistake. It is the mistake you you do and you learn from it how to resolve the mistake. And it is that which then much later, of course, I don't want to continue this topic. Much later, uh, during Byzantine architecture or something like that, they ended up putting attention rings here, and they realized that you don't need all that mass here. All you need to do is put tension rings in there, and your your Thickness of the arch, uh, thickness of the dome can be much smaller. But that's a, that's a matter which is a separate matter. Let me go next. Learning from history. I mean, actually, there is a very. I've already taken a step into the learning from history. That is uh, talking about uh, Pentium here. Um, learning from history. Let me let me take one more example on on learning from history. Okay, let me. Let me take um, St. Paul Cathedral here. Now, you have a cathedral which is like that here, you know, from outside. So you need, from a city scale, you need to have that kind of a dome coming up. And then on top of that dome, you have the, 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 the lantern. And that lantern cost uh, is, is the 850 ton of load how do you load how do you make a dome which can take that kind of a thing they are very nice they beautiful design they worked out they what they did was and then of course from the from a city scale that was required uh, any shallower dome would not look very nice at the city scale so they they realized that for the city scale it's important to have a dome that big but from inside they wanted a dome which is smaller here which is smaller here and that gives a scale to the inside space here. And in between these two is a conical arch here. A conical arch here made in masonry. Made in masonry. Which is taking the load of the, of the lantern and passing it through to the ground here. You know? And because this is the structure which is actually the catenary structure. It, it basically takes, there is no horizontal load coming, it takes the load and passes through. And because there is a building here, there is certain amount of horizontal load here, you know, but that's taken care. So there is one for the inside, one to take the load, and there is a timber structure here, which takes some metal sheeting outside. So what you see is a metal sheet, and the second layer takes the structure, and the third layer is the visual thing from inside. Now, this is beautiful. I mean, they could think of that. So they back out there. And of course, this structure was um, came down for certain reasons for fire and it was again done. So with every time they did it again, it changed and, and, and a better experiment was done in, in this. Let me go to the next one um, uh, to, to, to talk about this here. Um, this one, you all, all know, the Gothic architecture. And... and um, in this, uh, also, the, the learning basically uh, was done through mistakes. Every time they made a mistake, things will fall, it will again do it, again will fall. Analytically, if you see, uh, this is an experiment done way back in 60s. Uh, of course, these days you can do all that in the computer. That They made an acrylic cross-section, um, added the loads here, relevant loads here, hang it upside down. This is the very same technique which which um, Gaudi applied, you know. So this is kind of primarily learning from Gaudi and trying to understand the existing structures. So do do, do that now. When you do that um, and see it uh, through a specific uh, polarized glass, and that is what you see on the left here. And if you see 
if you see closely, there are some places where the density is less and some places where the lines are too many. So that, so, and then there is a color blue and, and pinkish and reddish. So these, between these two, you can understand where is tension, where is compression, where the load is more, where the load is less. You know? So that's a very nice, of course, these days you can generate all this in computer, but this is a physical model. And what on the right, what you see is a big oven and this acrylic sheet is hung there uh, and being heated. So when you heat it, it deforms. And when you see that in the polarized glass, that's what you see. You know, they, they added a whole lot of things. They added the first thing like that. Of course, this timber, this see, if you see this, this basically a, a conceived like that here. It is like tying a timber pieces together. But in timber, you can do it because there's a lot of stress here. But when you transfer the same form into, 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 into stone, there is a phenomenal amount of horizontal force which is coming here. There's a phenomenal amount of horizontal force which is coming here. And they build it, it broke, they build it, it broke. <coughs> and it's this process of making and breaking um, which, which gave rise to these flying buttresses here. And it is that we see the flying buttress and enjoy it. But it took a lot of time, a lot of energy. Um, it, it, they, they made it and they, it, it, was, it got demolished. Um, and, and that is how this was done. Anyway, um, I missed a couple of slides here. Uh, just one minute. Uh, let me now start from uh, for the from abstract to reality um, issues here. Um, so, um, what to take a leap? To take a leap, what we what uh, in the in the class what we generally used to do is take some abstract exercise. Um, for example, in this, the image uh, is the is the um, surfing board um, on the on the water, and and um, it is choppy and it is doing this uh, and it is that which gives rise to this. And the final product is going to be a, um, a tower where a person can stand and actually watch that nobody is drowning in the sea here. You know, that's the kind of a thing. So this is the result of a, a, of a form here. Now, we do not know how the structure is going to be. Now, that is the issue we need to solve. So we, we did that. And, and then uh, this is an exercise conducted maybe 13, 14 years, 15 years back in Goa, maybe more than that. You know, and we didn't have much material. So we took a very simple material and we started doing something like that here. Now, what you see is, what they're making is these kind of things here, a rigid joint here and four flexible joints. So you place the flexible joints over the flexible joints and you are the structure. You, you put a tie here and a tie here and it, it, it stands. Now that is the module here. You can see here, that's one module. That's a rigid joint. And, and these are the flexible joints here. One, two, three, four flexible joints. So you keep on stacking and every time it becomes a bit smaller and a bit smaller and that's the construction. So you end up putting one tie here and one tie here. And then down the line, down the line, they realize that it's still shaking, you know, because it is still twisting here because this, uh, this rigid joint was not good enough. So they ended up putting diagonals between they ended up putting diagonals here and a diagonal here, a diagonal here and a diagonal here. But that didn't allow. So this is all, they probably made this model about 10 times, it broke, and then we studied why it is breaking. Uh, and then we added that value and, and, and did that. So like well, like I was trying to explain in, in the Gothic architecture. Now, this is what the, the, the process is. Now, this is a, a, ballet, a ballet dancer, a very abstract form of a ballet dancer. Uh, and they wanted to do it in laminated timber. They back in 15 years back, we didn't have much of an understanding of laminated timber, but it took bamboo, laminate, laminated bamboo. So this is laminated bamboo construction uh, being uh, as an expression of this 
Now we are adding value, technological and structural value to it. And this is a ramp which is going up and there's a deck on top here, basically. This is another deck uh, which started from a fern. You know, you see how the fern is and how the whole form is developing. Um, so, so uh, you, then you come to this stage and then you start adding value to it, uh, a structural value to it. Uh, and that is how it is going up. There is a central, central uh, post here, you know, which basically ties the whole thing slowly as it goes up here. And then, of course, you could have a triangular ties on it. And then everything goes around, starts from a lower point and then keeps on increasing as it goes up here. And, and that's the structure which is, which is like that here. This is what it happens. So this is uh, uh, resolving the structure um, with, with the new technology. And now this is probably done, being done with steel here. Right? It's very important that when, when these kind of exercises are done, uh, the material chosen should, uh, because the scale is reduced, the material chosen should also have a similar um, character. I mean, if I take a steel plate and, and do this, it will be unfair because this will, of, of course, stand like that. So a very fragile plastic sheet is taken to make this so that if you put pressure like the steel thing, it will behave and it will break, it will bend. All this is very essential. So material which you choose to make these models as an experimental models are very important. Uh, this is an abstraction being done from Dandelion, uh, and uh, she has expressed it how it is going to, how it's flying, how it has no direction, and it takes a loop like that here, and that is being chosen uh, to do this. You have a ramp here, and it goes up here, and then you go up like that here, and that is what is an expression. Now each one becomes a truss here instead of being circle here, here circular here. This has become faceted here. Now each of these facets is basically a, a truss, which you can see here, you know, that getting transferred here. And then you, you go like that here. And, and of course, it is going further. And so exactly when you see the timber houses, you see the timber houses, the bracket here, and then the column goes up here. There's another, there's another bracket here, and then the column goes up here, you know. That's what you see in a timber house. So this is exactly what is happening. This is stage one, two, and three. That is stage one, and then members going up, and then two, and then members going up. So that's being cantilevered here. That's a very nice structure of how a very simple loop is, is being cantilevered, uh, taking inspiration from a timber structure in the houses, in the pole houses. And this is a more in detail, of course. And that is where the the walking takes place. This is where we don't generally don't end up getting into those kind of details here. This is the walkway here, you know, and that's the railing, and everything comes down and then goes down the line here. The structure, steel. Another very interesting um, uh, thing, the student here thought, wow, that's very interesting how a giraffe uh, stands here, stand vertical here with no legs, and then when you want to bring the neck down, you have to really lower this point and spread your legs like that. Only then the neck can come down to the water, you know, like this here, what you see here. How can that be, be useful? You know, so she ended up making a structure, something like that here. These are different stages. Uh, this is where the legs are spread here. And that is where the legs are gone narrow here, you know. And, and that, by doing that, your structure can actually um, change. And that is what she thought when she was doing that, that why can't the structure be made where, where uh, um, you know, uh, you can change the form here by, by spreading the legs like, like it happens in giraffe. So this is what is, I know it looks very ugly model in the base here, but that is because there are slots here. If you move these slots here, you do this here, this particular member would now go like that here, you know, it go like that. So that member will go here. So this is a hinge joint. So your structure will now become like that here. You know? So, and then that is the surface here. That is the surface here. That is the surface here. 
and then there is a connecting surface which is which is coming here which is coming so you can actually increase and decrease the 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 in this slot here increase and decrease the 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 base here and your whole roof structure to put change here beautiful um, understanding of how it can be done here and then of course while doing that we try to understand what best way we can do this how we can make this truss uh, how to stop the buckling how to make sure it's a truss in 3d all these are the learning which happen what is the understanding of a pin joint and what is a rigid joint and all those um, issues uh, which are important are just part of it when you make model and test it and do it uh, you don't nobody has to tell you uh, what to do you start learning from from doing basically um, a bit more complex project uh, started from a wind surfer again uh, and got into that you are going all over the place you know and something like that towards the end and then of course and that was something which was it was like your 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 body parts are flowing all over the place and and that's the kind of a inspiration she was trying to take a tensegrity structure you know and then we she ended up into that kind of a thing that if if this is a this is a kind of an exercise where um, a compression member is not transferring the load into a next compression member by touching it like if i apply this load here i can go like that but i tie it i tie two strings here and put the strings together and push the load here and that is what is happening here so by pushing uh, you the force get transferred to tensile force and then back to compressive force now that's an interesting way and and that is what she wanted to do make a make a bridge kind of a thing you know uh, and then she realized that instead of doing two let do three and and so three things come together like that uh, and the same way you know the, the three three string six facets you get here and when you push this triangle this one gets pushed you know and when you put them together that's what is happening here and the model this is what you see as a as a model here it looks very complex but actually very simple to under, to to see um the way you saw it in this no compression member is touching each other there is a, it's a tensegrity structure where compressive members are existing and tensile members and all the loads are getting transferred through the tensile members back to compressive members and that's the structure she ended up doing this is a old exercise from from australia maybe over 20 25 years back mm -hmm. and this was a um, observation deck at the at the end of the cliff um which is which is having a fall you know about 200 meter down here you know and you can see the scale of the people uh, compared to the the structure now when you have something like that how do you make a structure like that i mean you can't have scaffolding out there to to make it here because you have a 200 meter fall down there uh, so um, the student thought of uh, not only the structure but the structure was the result of the process of making it you know so the student thought well of course let me i'll show you those sketches later this is the this is the model uh, being done a group of three or four persons trying to understand and actually doing a hinge joint making a hinge joint a hinge joint and a common hinge joint here so there is one hinge joint and each individual member has a separate hinge joint here uh, and and very nice and detailed work being done here and you can see here that's the valley down there and that is happening in the end and what is really happening is like that the th this is the platform here and that's the valley down there so everything is happening on the platform here you recall the the structure you recall the structure back here and that is the form you construct it after constructing it you basically push it and it goes to that now this is what is happening here this is the valley this is the this is the valley here and this is hanging there every time something goes wrong you want to paint it maintain it maintain the deck and it cannot be done you just recall the structure back in this situation do whatever you want to do and push it back in here so this 
is not only learning the structure, but it is also learning how to do it. And it is as a designer, as an architect also. It's essential that we, we get into that. We don't uh, go to an engineer and say, I have a deck like that. I want to bring it back and put it forward. How can I do it? No, no, no. You don't. You go with a concept and a structural engineer would help you in sizing uh, the members and, and further helping clarify how to do it. But the concept has to be yours as a designer. So it's very important that you think about all those things. Um, some other exercises of a sumo wrestler, you can see uh, there are the ones, one wrestler here and one wrestler here. So the force from one wrestler is going into another another one, you know, going another one. The model being done here. Now, when you do work in steel, um, it is very much like a mechano set. You don't uh, do a work like a carpenter where you take a piece of timber and take a saw and cut it and size it and it doesn't fit well. You bring the piece down, cut it for another half a centimeter or a centimeter and put it and nail it and screw it. That's not the way one does steel. In steel, everything is, is precisely done, is calculated to the millimeter. And so they end up making shop drawings of each component here. You know, each component shop drawing is made you know, and, and the components are made. And then there's a process of assembly, exactly like a mechano set. And to give you how precise this kind of work can be, um, in, in Sydney Olympics, for example, uh, there are these two big arches here, which are, <coughs> you know, this stadium here, the two big arches going like that here. That's a big arch here. Now this comes, this was made in pieces like that in the workshop. Now they, they put some form work here and that much is done and then that much was done. And this final piece here just won't fit. And everybody is worried that, oh man, what is happening? The final piece is not fitting very well. Something has gone wrong somewhere in dimensioning. Then somebody realized that the workshop in which the work was being done was a shaded workshop. And the temperature inside was about 23, 24 degree. Whereas when you work in the sun out there, the temperature is about 35 degree. So the steel actually heats up and increases in the length because this is after all, almost about um, 150 meter or 170 meter long truss. Now the steel heats up and it, it shifts by a few millimeter, increases the in length by a few millimeter. So they waited till evening, till the temperature of this structure became at par with the temperature of the workshop in which this was fabricated and the piece went in. Now that is the kind of precision you have to have in steel, uh, which you don't require in, in, in timber. Engineered timber, yes, but not in the carpentry way when the timber is being used here. This is a mosquito. Um, 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 you can see that the structure here, the structure here, there is a, of course, there is a, there is a leg here, this leg here. You know? Now this leg, the, the two parts, you should see the mosquito in detail, half the leg has a lot of hair inside. You know? and half the leg is very clean. You know? So he's even trying to express that part here, half the leg has a central beam, central um, post, and then three tension points here. And half the post that is here, and half of that is uh, maybe three or four, and half of that is basically a cross like that here. So that, the, even that kind of an expression is, is given in while doing the structure. This was um, a Chinese calligraphy. And um, it started with, um, you know, Chinese hold the brush like that, the Japanese hold the brush like that, and then they move the brush like that here. And this is, if you, if you do a time photography, you will, you will get frozen, frozen movements of, of the Japanese calligraphy writing. 
and it is that which gave rise to the to the whole structure so each one was made in module like that here and all the modules were put together and uh, supporting structure was supporting structure was added and you can see the ties here and there there the network of ties here and then supporting structures here like the like the waiter carrying a tray you know waiter carrying a tray like that here you know which is very nice way of structure because the movement takes place that your your glass of wine or tea never spill because the fingers go up and down to to take care of that so and these are modules which are which are being assembled here so all the modules were made on the table uh, separately and after getting this form or and, and putting this uh, pyramidical things this was module were assembled on this this was um, this was a petrol pump um, a very strong black person holding a lady uh, in a ballet dance you know and that is what we got in the in the abstract in the leap uh, basically and then when we went into putting the um, uh, structure this is the structure now this actually is a fabric here which is missing here because if i put the fabric you won't be able to see anything what is happening underneath here so that's the fabric here that will be the fabric here and this is a, a member in bending in compression like an arch here and to keep the arch constantly uh, there is a member here which is a tension like here a tension member so that your your arch is constantly being being pushed down here and because there is a cantilever on one side so there is another tension member going like that uh, so that if i draw this member here this member is like that here like that here and like that here you know so there is another tension line here which is actually going in that direction which is making sure that this doesn't fall down and there is a tension line here and the tension line here which is holding this cantilever here so that is the construction actually this also we ended up making about five six different experiments on how to do it and <coughs> and actually load it not just a visual exercise load it and see how it is collapsing and see how you can you can improve that all that process and that is what we got in the end a beautiful beautiful structure uh, a petrol pump uh, underneath here you drive down in your ferrari and you land underneath and you you pass and you have a beautiful structure on top you know uh, fun to drive your ferrari also and this is way back when i went to australia in my very first year i was there um, i got a job which was just for one year so i thought let me try something good Uh, to position myself in there so we did this structure this is the tensegrity structure if you see it this is the hyperbolic paraboloid made in made in timber made in timber patterns here where two points are going up and two points are going down d means down here you know and then i have triangular members across like that which is one here and one there of course this is coming down to a straight line here and then there is one horizontal here and one horizontal in this axis so there is one horizontal here and one horizontal here and none of these one two three four compression members touch each other and the the timber um, lattice in a hyperbolic paraboloid form hold in the center to give you an idea of the scale this one is about 8 meter high so this is 8 meter by 8 meter by 8 meter four pieces and about 5 meter by 5 meter um, lattice hanging in the middle uh, structure second year work most of the work which you saw earlier is second year work so this is how i managed to take an entry into australia and uh, was there in the university for next to 19 years um, that was my first experiment there uh, with the with the students here that is where i am standing out there um this is uh, just to add that value 
uh, how we think, not only in the office, also we think, maybe some other time I'll show you some more projects and, and in the office how we think. Uh, we had, uh, we did a project in Bhutan about 10 years back and there was a bridge here. And normally that's a bridge here from one point to another point. We had to go from A to Z and there's a valley underneath here. So, uh, but of course you could take vertical support, but it's not water all the way. One could take it's a valley. So instead of doing like that, which you see the Lakshman Jula, they generally end up calling, where you have one member like that, one member like that, and, and when you tension it, this bridge doesn't go sideways here. It stops the movement sideways. So to stop this sideways movement, you have one tension point here and one tension point doing like that. And vertically, this is what it is. You hang it like that vertically. So you have the vertical hanging and the horizontal thing. Of course, it still shakes, but that's what it is. But we could take multiple supports. So we thought we will go some, do something like that here. We have a walking area here. And we put a triangle, we put a post here, and we put this here. And then we thought, yet, yeah, why not do from the, the point of view what we discussed earlier, make a mistake and solve it. And so instead of putting my post vertically and having my walkway on it, eh, we put the post inclined like that and had my walkway like that here. Now, when I do this here, I am going to, I'm going to, sorry, go up like that. When I do this here, when I do this here, I'm going to fall like that. Here. This is my post here. I'm going to fall here. And, and because I'm falling, what I need is another cable here, like that one here, you know, which will pull it, pull me back and it doesn't allow me to fall here. And that is what we ended up doing here. You know, that's the, that's the structure which is, this is, this one is trying to fall and this is the cable which is trying to bring it back and that's the prop here and at the prop so that my, my member doesn't break into half so I take a prop here and I also add a steel member and put a tie here so that the load which is coming here can be taken up by that joint and I don't want my timber to break here. So that's the kind of a structure we ended up doing. Anyway, let me go to another topic um, let me go to another topic which is concrete um, I believe that uh, of course uh, we need to understand what concrete is and how to uh, okay. I, um, I think I have already overshoot the time I, I will try to finish it quickly um, no issue sir you can take your time sir. yeah just another 5-10 minutes and I will be. I'll, I'll go through and um, so this is a um, I believe that um, they should basically make uh, models, again I said, making, learning by making, not, not just draw it. Uh, so this is a band, this is a, a stadium, you know, and that's your seating here, going to come here, and that's a joint here. And that joint was designed from the leg joint of a horse. You know, a horse doesn't sleep horizontally. Hop, horse just stands. And what happens is somewhere here, there is a there is a muscular pin here, muscular pin here. So they're standing and they put the pin in there so the joint locks and the do and the horse can stand and sleep. It becomes a table. The lower part of the body becomes like a table. You know, it can stand and sleep. So when you when when he gets up, they then pull the muscle back and then your legs become flexible. Now, this, this student came from farm, so he took this joint and explored the joint to, to make this structure here. Uh, this is a simpler structure, but trying to understand that in, in concrete, you don't put mats and bolts, but you actually end up putting haunches here. And it is that which takes a load and transfers the load onto the member. You don't just put a bolt here and tie it, because bolts Seal bolts cannot take the, the shear, which the massive weight of concrete members. So if you can see here, this guy was more focusing on the on the junctions and joints and make sure. So basically it's a triangular structure, which is trying to fall here. And I put a prop here to hold it. So I get my seating here and I get my seating here. And of course, some kind of a roof coming on top here. Now, when I put these posts here, 
there's a possibility that this could this this particular frame could fall down sideways so i take two frames and make sure i i i bolt some concrete members here so now lateral forces are taken care and when you go round they won't fall off so it's a very simple kind of a structure here um again very simple structure a uh, concrete basically they are about 1 to 1 to uh, 20 scale 10 scale models done in plaster paris this person wanted to make a shell so up to here you have your seating you have your seating coming up to here all this is your seating and going all the way down here is your seating and then the remaining becomes your shell roof here this one shell which at this point is actually deep like that here and on that point it is shallow like that here because at the end it will be little force is coming and then this is made in five pieces here and there are five pre stretching cables going in if you see this here that is because but 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 trigger happy and the squeezing uh, tension was too much so the um, so the cable released the plaster and came out there got too much tension got applied learning there's a mistake here and that is where the turn buckle were kept underneath you could turn it here that's a structure and and you can see here there are, there are five tension cables are going and underneath this here are the turn buckles here you can see that five cable being seen here and how to make it how to get the how to how to insert the 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 pipe which will take your cable later on the pre stressing cable later on how to put a mesh what to reinforcement how do you make all this the making of the mold itself everything is learning everything is learning yeah. I'll, i'll skip and of course um there is no end to uh, how much you can explore i've just draw some sketches and see you can you can take um you know support from from some of these beautiful uh, bone structure of a horse you know and, and and then take support from this you know this this here very very important if you see a dog standing you will be able to see there's a bone here and there's a bone coming out here and then there's a bone lying in the foot, foot here and that's a very long strong tension line you can see the leg is here but then the leg is like that here like that Now that is the tension line here here and that is why dog can jump and land and and run and push the more moment this gets pushed here this this piece goes like that and that is where you get the push for the kick and 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 run you know longer leap you know so it's lots of you can this is the same thing here it is that push here which controls the the leg movement and and the push in the running uh, running of the horse you know. so many way that's dynamic and we are now it is very important that coming back to the very early thing you were telling about learning from your own body that god has given us an extremely powerful sense of balance that that comes with the sense of uh, sense of uh, structure we we never pick up a very heavy bucket without uh, without even holding it we know this piece is going to be too heavy for me to hold it there is something in our mind and body which understands how much load i can take how much i can jump how much i can carry you know so if we didn't have that sense we would be falling all over the place while walking you know? but we don't you know so not only we have a very good static sense we have a very good dynamic sense at any split second when scenario is changing our mind calculates that and tells us how to balance you know so with that beautiful sense that we have it is very important that we somehow learn to use that ability which is already built in within us given by the god uh, to use and solve the structure that's very important and anyway, i'll go quickly you must be bored of me by now <laughs> just to understand you know this uh, this very complex structure here if i was to do this in situ it will be hell of a thing and but all i could do is i have to make a form work like that here and make a form uh, just a flat surface like that here and then 
कास्ट कास्ट ऑन द सर्कुलर सरफेस लाइक दैट सो आई गेट दिस कर्व हियर एंड अ स्ट्रेट लाइन वेरी सिंपल दिस इज कॉल्ड टिल अप कंस्ट्रक्शन सो यू एक्चुअली मेक थिंग्स हॉरिजॉन्टली इन अ वेरी कॉम्प्लेक्स वे एंड यू पुट देम वर्टिकली they become very nice three dimensional things which which to actually to do it is very difficult you know this is like that mexican sitting you know with a hat on top there you know next to the wall here with two legs and two legs and two arms you know spread and then of course they have to make it so well they may make a foam work for that they make a in, inside is the foam work of how that member is going to be and then these are the cycle um breaks in, you know uh, where which are being used as the pre stress member so you have bent these cables and cast uh, and then you can pull it and it can be used you know this is a very nice thing this is actually a, a mezzanine structure this is my um, steps here and that's the lower one which is also steps here so two two layer of decking here and that is my that is my structure which is holding lower one upper one and everything together and that's a tube and you can see that's about 5 meter to 6 meter tube uh, in in metal which we can be so this become by circulation you can either come on that and you can step down and go into a lower deck and then to decrease the weight that part is taken in steel a beautiful just imagine a structure like that going around a, a complete stadium and you could walk here and then this is directly connected to the exit here so you go up you go there and you are connected to the exit which is which become uh, partly a structure also and this is this is another very complex thing if you see that uh, bush bone i'm sorry i'm talking uh, only non vegetarian uh, person would understand that chicken there is a bone which is more like that and this this is done not in cylindrical but this is done in in a foam work like that it's a dome it's a dome it's a foam work like that to give you an idea this is a dome here you know and that's the base of that and on that base i i i i make this here so i might make here i can see the curve here that's going down and going up here is in curve this is a beautifully if i can place this member on it and it will it will be like that here it will be like that here so i make this all i have to do is have a have an edge here about the thickness of the of the member here let's say 20 cm i put a 20 cm edge and cast it horizontally and when i place it here it becomes a beautiful part of the so i have i have seating here then i have seating here and then i have this tension so i have oh, two members going up for seating one member vertically at the back here you know, and then two members coming out like that for for that here. now to give you an idea it are not tiny small models this is my this is my 8 feet by 4 feet 2.4 meter by 1.2 meter plywood sheet on which this model is being made now you got to make it large to got to you may only then uh, if breaks and, and does it and you you do it again no um, tiny model don't give you an idea of how really behave it just gives you a sense of form but not really how it is going to work a very nice construction uh, railway station this is the railway station uh, railway coming on both side so what you do is you you make a pyramid you make a pyramid and all you do is add these three pieces here and pour concrete here and somewhere here it goes and it is connected so when i remove this i get that here now that part is inside here these edges are outside here right so i get this and you know these two girls who are uh, they the kickly they call it they they hold their hand and they go round and round uh, in dancing you know so it's like that kind of a scenario here and you hold it that's that's a pyramidical shape and and you can actually compress it and carry it like that here in a very compact form in a truck you know it's a very compact making it very simple all you need is a triangular thing uh, and you get this 
and you assemble it like that and of course you put a roof on it which hangs on both sides here similar you can see here there is one member here one member here and that's one member here that's all two member one here one here and then of course you have a gutter here and you have the purlins here if you want to make the lighter roof and the roofing there or you could end up making concrete shells here and that also could do so this can be can be done a very simple method you can see here <coughs> this person is doing one member one member going this way same going this way you tie them together put a gutter here and that is your one roof that's your other roof here that's your roof here one member you cast it you put it assemble and you you basically get a, a roof on the platform here like this here module like that here this came from inspiration from mandu if you see the janana area uh, for prayer underneath that that's the kind of a structure here there's a module you make it you put them together and that's what you, that's a kind of a space you get in stone in mandu and uh, students are trying to make that in in uh, precast concrete here and of course just some of the bridges we were trying to do this bridge here in in uh, um, in in here but in, anyway they ended up making a lakshman jhula at the end um, maybe some other time i think i have gone uh, way over the time and that is uh, all as far as this is concerned and before i uh, give it to ayaz i would like to say that um, i would like to say that we are we are basically going to have uh, um the new material i am now uh, after doing set workshop i am particularly getting engaged in in timber there uh, we are now very seriously working on clt that is the cross laminated timber and um, with the help of uh, sponsors mitsubishi from japan uh, are coming uh, because they are into production of uh, of clt so we are trying to throw a competition uh, for professional and for students um, shortly and this competition is going to uh, start uh, with a talk from uh, kango kumma on 21st 21st on 21st we will have that uh, um, on uh, I'll, tell, i'll give it to ayad on the same platform you will be able to see that um, in a in a few days time so on 21st kango kumma is coming for a talk and he is also part of the jury uh, and later um, uh, we will uh, have three workshops one by the japanese on trying to explain uh, uh, cross lamination one by um, re recently post graduate students from harvard about six of them are coming on board to to conduct a workshop on on how to innovatively and creatively use uh, cross laminated timber and then we for the indian uh, setup we are taking two buildings of uh, of um, charles korea that is um, kanchan changa and the tube house and we are trying to convert that into into uh, see into clt and see how we can do that uh, so with these three workshops uh, we will have a competition which probably have an, a submission towards the end of uh, march and everything will be open uh, by by monday or tuesday uh, so we would appreciate if all those who listen can join in and that is the new interest i have right now we are working on that thank you yes thank you so sorry for extending sorry for extending the time <laughs> no no sir you know at one point somewhere in between you paused for a while and you said that you know uh, are you guys getting bored and uh, we had a comment from someone in the facebook and someone is saying that definitely not we can go on doing this for the whole day <laughs> so and it it is fantastic i mean it has always been refreshing personally for me i think also varab and uh, to see these explorations and to what level i think you can take these explorations is something that is that is amazing and and like the way you have titled the talk 
structure in architecture a process you know what i found is that there are multiple processes instead of just one process that you just mentioned. absolutely you know multiple. so learning from history learning from your own body learning from nature learning from making mistakes yeah, they are all all topics by itself yeah, yeah each one of them is a process and you have actually demonstrated that very nicely through the examples and your own uh, unique observations so i'm i'm really i think thrilled to to have been part of this presentation i i think i'll before i'll hand it over to bhairav for him to i think take over the discussion thank you as yes bhairav uh, and thank you sir it was a really nice presentation i have never got an opportunity to hear you before i have heard from lot of people uh, about your talks but i have never got the opportunity this is the first time so i'm really glad now i have two three questions which i would like to ask uh, first is that i mean it was very interesting how you showed in the third or second or third slide that how technology can become an hindrance if it has come at a very early stage like uh, allowing not allowing you to take that leap i think you were kind enough to show it as a wall of technology rather than you know a structural engineering st structural engineer standing there and preventing you from taking a leap <laughs> uh, but that that, that, that. <laughs> that that takes us to a very interesting question that at what stage in the whole process you would in like to involve a structural engineer's input because uh, it is like a double edged sword you know uh, if you involve him too early him him or her too early there is definitely an advantage of uh, collaborating and lot of people who have a uh, lot of uh, good practices tell about collaborating collaboration between engineer and architecture architect on the other hand uh, you know if you involve a uh, humoral too early it may also prevent you from taking that leap so which is an ideal stage at which you would involve or get an input from an engineer uh, take take my engineer to a <clears throat> to a classical um, music program and then come back and discuss structure with him <laughs> <laughs> that is how i do it i mean to give you an example um, um this guy engineer who was uh, louis lucan's um, engineer kamandan he was a violinist in an orchestra and after maybe 20 25 years in that he then started practicing engineer no that is the kind of a, all i'm trying to say i'm not saying uh, that you start learning violin <laughs> all thing is that the open mindedness is but and we have worked together i mean there's no harm in sharing that with them um we have worked together and um, we always um, you see architect the whole idea when we teach in school is that one should not make a plan and go to an engineer and say this is a plan what kind of a structure should i put you know that is wrong that's wrong the architect must have a very clear understanding of what is the structure he or she is doing how the force is acting and be able to sit and argue with the structural engineer and generate a healthy discussion now it doesn't matter what what stage you come in you could come in at a very first stage you know if the if the project um, like that um, like the bridge we are doing here we would be at one time doing now if that bridge wants to be done Uh, after the very preliminary sketch i think the structural engineer will have to be involved in that straight away because it i can won't be able to go further without that you know uh, and if i was uh, doing um, a house for example and uh, the special the, the spatial issues and other issues were more important then maybe the structural engineer could come at a bit later stage so i i don't think there is a set rule in this it depends on what you are doing and sometimes the and like if you see kelatrava's work um, it is a structural expression to start with you know so i can't uh, do that and then say okay now the structural engineer can walk in no uh, he can do it because he is a structural engineer and an architect at the same time so there's a added benefit that that is. so it depends on what project it is how your thought process is going and accordingly one can involve the structural engineer in the design process 
There's no set answer for that. Yes, please. Okay. Uh, another thing you mentioned about the sense of balance, you know, that we uh, intuitively have a sense of balance. Absolutely. Uh, but, but while working with you, you know, I've observed uh, that you also have a very good sense of uh, structural proportions in this, in the sense that, you know, what yeah. kind of sizes might work in a given condition, I give which, you which, which may not, uh, which I have not seen in every architect, but uh, some architect like you, you know, they have a very good of uh, good sense that this size might work or, you know, we may need certain uh, increase in the size at this point. So how one develops that kind of uh, intuitive sense towards structural proportions? I really don't know how to answer that, but I will give you um, a statement by my teacher, uh, Dr. Vakil. I know Dr. Mehta, you must have, I don't know what is this, he's still alive. Yeah, yeah he's. Uh, so I should come and touch his feet one of these days. He was my teacher, uh, technology teacher. And anything more we used to ask him, he said, that is my bread and butter, don't enter into that. You just stay as an architect. That's the answer he used to give, give us. And Dr. Vakil was our early teacher in first year, second year kind of a thing. You know, I'm mean, a person of that personality. And his thing was that, uh, that in nature, uh, things are, things are uh, beautiful because they are well proportionate. And, uh, and um, banana uh, thing is very heavy and uh, bamboo is very light and still go very tall. Uh, so all that happens when the material changes, each material has its own sense of structure and proportion. And you can learn that from nature. And that is why nature is so beautiful, because everything is so beautifully well proportionate. You can't say bamboo can be half a centimeter thinner if it is that long. No, no, it cannot be. And, and, and that is, like, just to give you an example, that we are really not very sensitive to that. To give you an example, um, termites are termite when they eat the, when they eat the building. They are so sensitive that your door frame, they will eat it up till the paint layer because they know it is not structural. But the beam, they will not do it. In the beam, uh, they will only eat the central core and leave the beam because they, they, they can hear the, uh, you know, I attended a workshop in, uh, in Tasmania on timber and uh, very nice, very, one of the very world known workshops in there. And we must have tested maybe 30, 40 beams of all shapes and sizes. You know, we made beams and, and did that. And in that, they were putting the small um, microphones um, they, uh, all over the, the thing. And there was a recording going on. You know. And even if the timber, much before it, did, it breaks, would start making sound. And you can figure out where the sound is coming from. So... The, the, the creatures like, like termite is so powerful in that, that it listens to that sound and never eats the timber beyond the structural capacity. That sense is there. We also have that, but we are not using it. <laughs> we need to realize that. Yeah, I think that reminds me of uh, one quote which I will like to read, quote by Newton. He says that nature does nothing in vain when less will serve, for nature is pleased with simplicity and affects not the pomp of superfluous causes. So I think that's that's very true. Uh, and that's why uh, the, the lessons we learn from nature could be very useful on how the transition takes place, you know, as the stress changes. I think it's all uh, very beautiful. Yeah. But I, I somehow feel that in nature, from nature, we should learn more of the principle rather than the mimicry in its form sense. We kind of uh, mimic the nature in its form, like making a tree of that sort in, in Singapore they're making. You know, they, those mimicries are more of a form rather than the, the principles. Idea is to mimic the principle rather than the form itself. You know? I think that that was very nicely done by by people like Fayotto. Um, if you see, if you see some of his publications, you will see that he was very sensitive uh, in terms of that, and 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 did very too many experiments on how nature can be can be used in the 
in, in the, but not the actual form in the in, in in terms of the principle of structure yes please okay uh, one last question uh, yes. since we are talking about technology and architecture and one of the way in which technology has changed uh, so let us say timber construction is by uh, invention of glue laminated timber and one of the major limitation of timber earlier was the limitation of form that you couldn't make curved forms you couldn't make grid shells uh, because uh, because timber is available as a linear element so one of those constraint has been removed i mean it more than since more than a century now uh, still in india uh, why that technology has not come up what what has what constraints uh, were there i mean well there are two fundamental uh, problems one is that we have shortage of timber you know like most of these countries like japan is supplying timber can you imagine a tiny place uh, it has surplus timber and is ready to export uh, timber uh, clt to to india you know? and so we don't have that kind of policies you know um, so that is the the one of the fundamental issues that we have that uh, we are not able to to grow timber um in the in the required um, quantity and even if we we change our policies now like the policy is that every time you cut one tree you have to put minimum three or four trees you know at least two will survive so you are increasing the quantity of timber which you are growing or trees you are growing rather than decreasing that is very important that kind of policy we don't have any policy like that you know? we have just started that that you don't use it so they have stopped using the timber and that's causing another problem because in a very earthquake zone in the himalayas they have started using concrete and waste concrete and uh, and uh, um, stone you know and every time it is going to have an earthquake which is expected in that area very soon uh, you can imagine what is going to happen to all the stone and concrete you know and that method they have is uh, you know that uh, Uh, cut khuni kind of a system that everything will shake and and stay in position it cannot be done because um, the timber is not there you know so we are losing in that that's one the second part is the the glue the the putting it together now um, traditionally we used to have saris i don't know whether you you ever heard of this material saris is the concentrated pectin of the bones when you boil bones what you get is a very concentrated form of pectin which later on is refined and given to you with strawberry flavor and sugar <laughs> and, je <laughs> and jelly but that is that is pectin of animal pectin uh, and uh, but then the fevicol and these things came but if you see it carefully when you put two timber pieces together uh, it is not never going to be possible that two can touch with a very thin layer of glue inside you know and if they don't touch each other then you are going to have problem of separation basically because when the glue dries it shrinks and it leaves a cavity and a gap there so what they have started using now is is polyurethane glues if you see the polyurethane foam you know so tim the glue has certain amount of expansion which takes place so when you take two pieces of timber and put them together whatever is the gap left between the two pieces the glue expands and fills it up like a cellular structure you know and becomes as strong as the timber now these technologies were not available you know, you know. so that is also the reason why why that is that is happening the timber uh the availability of timber and the availability of adhesives both have been uh but not available in india and probably there could be other reason but this is the main reason i would say but from uh, our experience of working in bhutan where you know in a place like bhutan which is not technologically so advanced uh, with certain help you were able to uh, uh, have a setup to do timber at a very large scale so do you think that in certain areas in india like northern india where the timber is widely available we don't have, we don't have timber no 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 we still don't have timber we do not have timber uh, bhutan has 76% of forest and when we said get the timber 
they had close to 1500 logs uh, up to the up to 50 60 70 cm diam 60 cm uh, diameter uh, stock there we don't have that kind of timber no no we are very shortage of timber in north we look like there is timber but there the natural forest timber is not good you see what is problem is the in a natural forest forest the timber starts going all over the place here so it is very important that timber is grown first at a very dense uh, thing like every half a meter you have a tree there when that tree goes up to about 2 meter then you remove every alternative one and then after 2 years you again remove an alternative one so you make the tree go vertically up and then only you can get clean vertical piece of timber if you take the forest timber that has not and because it is growing all over the place like it will never give you a straight piece and it will give you a very knotty and very very rough kind of a timber so the forest timber is not good for for this work you have to control the growth of timber only then you can get good timber for timber construction that will take another 20 years for india to get there maybe more okay yes. thank you i think thank you, that's sir. all from my side so if uh, the, if you uh, have some time then i can maybe take a couple no, no, all the time all the time no problem yeah no uh, yes. you know uh, the way you started with that diagram of a free leap and yes, uh, then that wall of knowledge that needs to be you know get rid of now uh, you know many of these explorations that you have shown and uh, also uh, if we look at the way typically when the students come let's say when the students enter to we are very much bound by our conception of the space in terms of x axis y axis and z axis whereas in nature there is there is no such you know axis i mean that is only for our understanding that we have identified that to and as a student particularly when they come they are pretty much you know bound by that what is in front what is in back what is in my right what is in my side now many of these explorations particularly the ones that i start from the nature demands that you know i get rid of uh, that x y z you know notions of space and explore really in a free sense so then you know these kind of explorations that you have shown you know they start opening up you know your mind starts accepting them and then you start putting them on paper so uh, when i'm talking about in an architectural course you know uh, how does uh, how can this happen you know through what kind of exercises through through what ways you know students can be made more made more open to these explorations so if you see most of these explorations in the in this uh, where we are taking a leap are taken by making models rather than by doing sketches because when you draw plan when you draw section it is then when your axis starts coming in yes if i drawing a plan then i cannot think that in the plan this is going in a very different way you know so so when you make a model you don't have that sense of x y and z model is the three dimensional thing which you make and it is the material which you have in hand which is the which is controlling the form of that that is why in those exercises i didn't want to not show in detail in those exercises like we have done it earlier also that somewhere half way you tell them to change the material you get some form and then you say all right this time it's not paper it is uh, wire and uh, uh, stocking or it is um, you know some other material so every time a material changes it gives rise to a different way of thinking basically because every material has its own way of uh, doing things and it is when you make models like that then you automatically break that x y z uh, issue uh, because you are focusing on respecting the material and and getting the form rather than trying to impose the form on the material i think this is why am i able to answer partly yeah, your yeah, question yeah i think i think uh, making was... model making model making stops that uh, control of x y z axis true true 
yeah i think that's that's good so more than the sketches of course the sketches are your primarily observations are there but from conceptually you start exploring through the model and then you sort of step by step evolve it into uh, into uh, a proper design so uh, you are able, you... able to do that now in computer bit more easily yes, you make yes. a surface you take a pinch every surface and pull it and push it and you can do all that in computer these days much better so so the x y z is gone now anyway because when, actually uh, it goes uh, the, the only the disadvantage in computer is that that sense of material you get when you actually make a model disappears you, know? you get a form yes but you do not know how to make that form what material to use to make that form and what should be the character of the material to do that i think that is missing uh, so making actual models is far more the far more learning in that in my opinion so yeah. actually you have partly answered my second question i was actually going to come to this whole uh, opportunities that are now open in the form of parametric uh, and the you know there are certain plugins that you get in grasshopper who allow you to explore structure for example kangar who allows you to uh, do some explorations in structure so at what stage would you sort of bring in those tools i mean i mean what you know it could be from the very beginning look I, I, it could be from the very beginning also depending on that you understand what the parameters are so but let me go back to the earlier thing i i make one model in um, paper for example or cardboard i get certain form in in cardboard now i have changed the material let's say i have changed it to wire and uh, fabric so i have to keep my um, conceptual clarity that means what i am trying to express that component has to remain the same but the material has now changed you can do this in parametric or why did you put the parameters properly you give the instruction that that is the form now i change this form to to wire and fabric now what are the parameters of a wire and what are the parameters you will add for the fabric if you are able to add the correct parameters then you will get the correct form but it is very complex it is it is far more easier to do a actual model than uh, than understand all the parameters which which go behind uh, that particular thing so i think it's a good uh, good thing i way back some of my students came from a in australia and um, they were learning um, a parametric program called processing uh, that is the one which is uh, available free of charge on the net and it it starts with basic language um, in in that um, um, they had actually taken uh, um, uh, kabuzier's uh, housing marshall block and put about you know 30 40 50 parameters of that you know broke it down to that and then added those parameters and then you know, no matter what is the blocks shape you put there it will put all those parameters and give you the house straight away a very interesting uh, exercise they had done so all the parameters of of the marshall block will come in there no matter what kind of a shape or you put there what uh, circular this that anything all the maximum amount of parameter would it's interesting it's interesting manually doing that is very difficult um, so parametric has a um, lot of advantages i agree but i think both the things should be done parallel believe otherwise uh, um, you make a form and end, end up putting a stainless steel mesh on it because you don't know what other material to use you know and, and that's all the material you can think of which will take that form so you put it in going into a into a perforated stainless steel mesh you know? and that that i don't think is the right uh, way of doing things so there's so, a question uh, uh, there's a question on social media which is i think very much partly you've answered so but it, basically that uh, we have a viewer who is asking that so do you uh, uh, install or do you say that you know the sketch and imagination should come before morphology and geometry i think so yeah i think we pretty much uh, i think one should be free of uh, of the uh, of the actual line of 
you know, freedom is more important to start with that that is exactly control. what you said you know when you said but don't get come in a moment i take a pipe and the pipe is straight you know, and it's going to control me so why bring why bring that in the beginning because then your your thought process will get controlled so be free in the beginning and controls can come in later and then anyway they they're going to control you to get get to something you know. yeah freedom um, first and this is an issue we have been discussing um, in the pedagogical thinking in the school also whether this freedom uh, or this kind of an abstract line of thought should be added early or should be done later some people think that you must teach them the basics first and then they should be taken to think in abstract and think into into different uh, ways of doing things and the other group is which says no no the kids are innocent they should be uh, they should be allowed to stay innocent and they should be given the freedom and the rules should come slowly one by one later not in the beginning now there's always a controversial discussion in the in the teaching profession on this what is right or wrong i i cannot say but uh, i believe in freedom first and uh, bringing the rules later that partly answers that question which you are asking me i think yeah pretty much i think you've answered the question and one last question i think there's one more from the social media where the question goes like how do you advocate the choice of material on the basis of sustainability especially when it comes to steel versus wood in today's time um <laughs> <laughs> yeah <coughs> if i was going wood in my backyard and uh, um, counting the 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 embodied energy then of course steel is completely out of the window but because we are doing this kanchan changa building we also have one person one of our ex students there who is doing a masters she she is going to join in and and talk about when we do the entire kanchan changa building in in clt compared to in concrete what is the difference in the embodied energy but then we are also going to add in that that if the material is coming from japan and all the shipping and carting is going to happen what is the difference you get ultimately in the in the embodied energy so if the tree like in bhutan as you gave example earlier uh, if the trees are right there and not more than 100 me uh, you know 5 km away uh, then it is beautiful but if the uh, material timber is coming from 2000 10000 km then it changes so it all depends on the the embodied energy issue and that is what is very important it could be that concrete is cheaper than doing in timber till we start having home grown timber uh, in abundance and in good quality and quantity then then only the timber will become more sustainable not at present not at present yeah i think we pretty much answered uh, all the question and it's it's always fantastic to talk to you to you know have conversations with you and and i hope that you know we can continue this uh, sometime yeah. again in future you know it's, it's it's a refresher course for me and i'm sure for better also every mm-hmm. time when we when we hear you when we look at your no we are still working together we have we just uh, that clt building in in delhi we are thinking yeah. uh, bera is coming to delhi with us uh, we are we are working on that together fantastic i think i would love to uh, uh, see that thing so uh, professor gurudev singh professor bera patel i think i'm i'm really on behalf of my team i am i'm really thankful to you from the bottom of my heart for giving us your valuable time for sharing your knowledge your insights and it it has it has really really been wonderful kick start to this new interview series that we have imagined uh, so uh, i think with that i think i would like to conclude and uh, would request you request all the viewers who are there with us online that this is uh, the beginning of a new series which we have titled it as technology in architecture so we started today's uh, we started with today's lecture of professor gurudev singh and uh, so we have six more lectures lined up every saturday 11 o'clock in the morning we are going to have one more lecture next uh, saturday we are going to talk to architect jwalant mahadevwala 
uh, he's from Ahmedabad and he leads a firm which is called as and black design studio so I hope all of you to see you again next Saturday at 11 a.m. and thank you so much uh, again for joining with us thank you good day sir thank you Bhairav thank, thank you thank you bye bye, bye.